And the author does a really good job of kind of cons constraining. Constraining? Why am I like this? Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are well. Today we're just gonna do a really chill, simple, easy video <laughs> because uh, uni is ramping up a little bit and I'm a bit stressed. So I just needed something easy I could come talk about. And also we've been doing a lot of work getting the Thousand Doors Readathon ready, which starts this weekend on Sunday. So I'm really excited for that. I've done all my prompts, they're all ready to go. So I've been a bit busy, I'm not gonna lie. I'm a bit stressed. <laughs> Me after being back at uni for five weeks, LMAO. Oh my god, I'm just, I'm so over it. I just had enough, I can't take any more. <laughs> so what I really wanted to come today and chat about is the books I really want to read before the end of the year. The books I'm really excited for, that I really want to read, that I'm looking forward to most. There's eight books here in total, and four of them are books that I have plans to read. They are plan for different reading vlogs I've got planned. And the other four are ones I don't currently have any plans to read and wanna fit into reading vlogs and stuff like that somehow. So I think we're gonna alternate between one and the other and yeah, let's just get started. So the first book I really wanna talk about is Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. I have been meaning to read this for like years, years. It's kind of bad that I've never read it. Are you not ashamed of yourself? Are you not embarrassed? I'm gonna be doing a reading vlog where I read Six of Crows and Cookie Kingdom together. And I'm really excited about that. So I hope you are too. <laughs> At one point I did think like, maybe I'll do like a read along for this, but I don't think this book needs any more hype. Do you know what I mean? I don't think it needs me doing a read along for it. But what I know about this is that it's written by Lee Bardugo, who is an icon. As someone who wants to get into writing, like, this, that's not really going well between booktube and uni work. It's not really happening. But I've been watching a, quite a few like writing videos and I've watched Lee Bardugo talk a lot and I just love the way that she talks. I just love her kind of outlook on writing and I loved Ninth House by her. Shadow and Bone trilogy, like we don't really need to speak about her. We like, we don't. It's fine. We can just pretend. I don't know her. Uh, I don't think we need to pretend it doesn't exist. It's not that bad. But it's like not Ninth House standard. I loved Ninth House. Ninth House was incredible. So I'm hoping this will be a kind of like similar vibe just in terms of like the quality of writing to Ninth House. I know we have kind of like a group of misfits. We have Kaz. Who else? We have Nina. Uh, I can't remember any of the other ones. <laughs> But it's also, it's a heist novel. So I think that they, it's like a lot about kind of like sleight of hand and them tricking their way into situations and like working together. And I know that Kaz has a cane as well. Cause I've listened to Lee Bardugo talk about how it kind of mirrors her experience with having to use a cane as well. So this is just like a booktube classic. Everyone and their mother has read this and I haven't. I think it was very popular in the time that I wasn't on booktube and wasn't reading and it's just time. It's just time. So I should be reading this in November. Very excited. I love the collector's edition so much. It's so pretty. I love it. Like with my I love books like this where there's no sleeve and the the hard cover is just beautiful. So I don't need a filter. I'm naturally gorgeous. <laughs> Hoping that I'll love this as much as Ninth House. So the next book is one I don't currently have plans for, and it is When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. So if you watched my last video, which was my book haul. I hauled this in that video. This is by Alyssa Cole. I just said that. Thank you, Megan. She is traditionally a romance author, but this is her first thriller. And I just heard so many people saying really, really good things about this. It is a thriller kind of based on the idea of gentrification where this woman lives in Brooklyn and she notices that all of her black neighbors are moving out. White people are moving in. But something, I guess, more like thrillery and sinister is at play as well. I just heard so many wonderful things about this. I definitely want to read it before the year is up. I feel like I just want to read thrillers way more during um, like winter times and I just got so excited when I saw this in the bookshop because I didn't think I'd be able to get it in Waterstones in the UK. Like I just thought it was that kind of book it wouldn't stock but I saw it there and I was gagged. A reenactment. <gasps> I was 
like so excited to read it. So hopefully I'll find a way to fit this in before the end of the year. Okay, so the next book I really want to get to before the end of the year is European Travels for the Monstrous Gentlewoman. This is a big boy. It's like, it's basically 700 pages. It's 700 pages. And you're going to be shocked when I tell you, I think this is going to be the first book I read for the Thousand Doors Readathon. Now, obviously you guys can't plan what you're going to be reading, but I know what the first prompt is. Obviously, I don't know what path I'll take from there, depending on what I think of my books, but I know what my first prompt is. <laughs> and this, in my opinion, fits my first prompt. So I think I'm going to be reading it for the readathon um, and it's 700 pages. I do have the audiobook as well, but like, am I shooting myself in the foot for my own readathon? I don't know. <laughs> I think my plan is in the readathon to read this and then read loads of like 100 page books, like really, really short books, and then I'll finish it easily. Lies, lies, and more lies, and lies on top of lies. That is the plan. I don't know how well that's going to work out, but this is the second in a series. Oh, I'm also going to be buddy reading this with Riley Marie. She read the first one like a couple weeks ago on my recommendation, and she gave it five stars. She loved it. So we're going to be buddy reading this bad boy together. So this is the second book in a series. The first is The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter. When I found this book, it was such a shock. I've never heard anyone speak about it. I've never seen it anywhere. I picked it up completely on a whim, the audiobook, and it's incredible. It's basically the daughters and female versions of a lot of classic Victorian male figures. So we have Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde's daughters. We have, I think, the female Frankenstein. We have Beatrice Rappuccini, Catherine Moreau, and they basically, in the first book, it's their, them coming together in this found family element. And there is, there's like a murder mystery element, but it's not major. But they are also trying to figure out this kind of secret society that their fathers were part of, where these very strange experiments took place. And they're trying to get to the bottom of that. They're trying to basically get to the bottom of who their fathers and the men around them really were. And Sherlock and Watson are also in this. And it, I think the author does a really good job of having them in it, having them be really familiar figures but not have them overtake the story it's still the girl's story Sherlock is such a big character and such a well-loved character he could easily kind of become the star of the show and he's such like a overwhelming character you know he's so like concerned only with himself and the author does a really good job of kind of con constraining constraining why am I like this why am I like this? It does a really good job of constraining him to allow the other characters to shine. I think all of the characters in this series are brilliant. Like all of the girls bring such a different thing to the table. They each have such cool personalities. Another thing I love about this is that the story is being written by Catherine. And so as she writes, they'll cut in like you can't really see that but like a script complaining about what she's writing or saying I don't think it really happened like that and it's just such an engaging part of the story it's such a surprise and I think it really helps bring the characters to life so I'm so excited to read this I'm hoping it won't take me too long like I flew through the first one so hopefully it won't take me too long but it is a big 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 boy <laughs> I'm probably gonna read this for like six days of the readathon and then the last two have to read four more books <laughs> This is coming up on a, along a similar topic. So the next book I really want to read before the end of the year that I haven't got any plans for right now is The Five by Hallie Rubenhold. So this is a non-fiction book and I really haven't been reading enough non-fiction, but I really want to. And this is about Jack the Ripper's victims, his five victims, and it's talking about their lives and who they really were because these women often are so ignored and so forgotten. Everyone just like only cares about Jack the Ripper. No one cares about these women and this this story is really trying to bring them to life. This story, this like book is really trying to bring them to life. I really love reading about like forgotten women in history and who they were because women have like not been written into our history books. If this is something you're interested in, I would really recommend the series Forgotten Women by Jing Sheng. I've only read one. I've read The Leaders, but I loved it. I'm really excited to learn about these women's stories and who they were. So hopefully I can find 
a way to fit this in somewhere. Next is a book I'm going to be reading very soon. It's actually kind of the next book I'll be reading and it is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. So obviously I am going to read this before the end of the year but I'm just so excited for this. I also hold this in my book haul. So excited to read. It's Riley Sager. Also, everyone always thinks it's a woman, it's a man. I didn't know that originally. I think it's intentional because it is a pen name. And I often find that like men, when they're writing thrillers, they often take on like female sounding pseudonyms. Like who is the guy who, um, the woman in the window, the guy who's really dodgy and like is a serial liar. Is it AJ Finn? That kind of sounds like female. And then in other fields, when a woman is writing like certain genres, like, I don't know, science fiction, they take on a pseudonym to sound like a man. It's really interesting. But Riley Sager is a man, but it's not his name. I said in my book where it really reminds me of Haunting of Hill House, which is just... The power that that has, the intelligence that that has. It reminds me of Haunting of Hill House because there's this family who lived in this house and they only lasted 20 nights before fleeing in the middle of the night. Something ghostly has happened and our protagonist's father writes this really popular like ghost horror book about it, but she doesn't remember it. She doesn't think that what he's written actually happened. But then she has to go back to the house in order to, I think, sell it. I know that it alternates between the story that her father wrote and her story and I'm just so excited. I am so excited excited. I think this is going to be such a quick read. Riley Sagar's books, I've only read Lock Every Door, but that was definitely a quick read. And they, they feel like the perfect books to read like in October, November, December. Do you know what I mean? Like at the end of the year, I think I read Lock Every Door in December and it was so perfect. So I'm hoping this will be a good time to read this as well. And yeah, very, very excited. Hello? I literally just said that. Next, let's talk about a book I haven't currently got plans to read, but really want to. And it is Wild Beauty by Anna Marie McLemore. I have literally wanted to get into their books for so long. Like for so long. I'm really ashamed I haven't read this yet. When I bought it, I was like, oh my God, I'm so excited. I'm going to read this straight away. And then I haven't. I've just found it difficult to fit into a vlog. I actually don't know much about the plot. I know that this book is magical realism so it's going to have that kind of fantasy in our real world setting and I just asked on Twitter where should I start with their books and I think it was Kayla from Books and Lala who said Wild Beauty is the best place to start so I got it. When I've this, watched people talk about Anna Marie McLemore's books they're often a bit difficult to describe in terms of plot but I think this is just going to have such beautiful magical writing that kind of just wraps you in this like fairy hug. <laughs> I really so badly want to get to this that I can start reading all the other books, but I currently haven't got plans. So we've got to fit it in somewhere. And then the last book I do have plans to read is The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. If you watch my vlog, you know that I bought The Devil in the Dark Water recently. And I probably should have read this before doing that. But a lot of you told me in the comments, you think I'm really going to love this. So that, that we're off to a good start. What I know about this is that Evelyn Hardcastle has been killed at this party that her parents are thro throwing and our protagonist is every day waking up in a different body as one of the guests. So he's waking up as one of the different guests at the party to try and figure out who has murdered her. I love a good murder mystery as you all know. I've heard this is very confusing but I like confusing books and I'm just ready. I'm really ready to read this. I've been putting it off long enough and I'm hoping that I'm really gonna love it. I'm re I really hope I'm gonna love it because I've bought like his book, his next book, and it's really expensive. It was therapeutic for me, I don't regret it. I have heard some mixed things. I have heard that there are some fat phobic elements in this, like just in the way that like fat bodies are described is really like gross, like the, the way that language is used in this. So that does make me feel a bit nervous about reading it. I'm reading it for video, we'll see how it goes. I really wanna love it. And then the last book that I don't currently have plans to read but really want to is The Raven Boys by Maggie Stevewater. Now, if you watched my Bacopoly reading vlog where I did Bacopolathon in two days, I actually started this. I read, I think, up to like the first 100 pages, but then I knew I wouldn't be able to finish it in that video and I wanted to complete Bacopolathon, so I, <laughs> so I um, sacked it off and read Silver in the Wood instead but I do really want to get to it I was really enjoying it but I just felt like I was rushing it at the time so hopefully if I have a bit more time to read it I won't feel like that basically we have these four friends who are like obsessed with these ley lines like things called ley lines and there's something about King Arthur like the ancient King Arthur I was very confused 
It's not fair! I don't get it! When I was reading the book, they had just met Blue, who kind of lives in this family of witches, and she had been told that the first boy she loves, if she kisses him, he'll die. And she also, in like one of the first scenes, sees a spirit of one of the boys in like the cemetery, meaning he's gonna die soon. Because I have read some of it already, I just kind of want to like get it read. Like, I just want to read it. I've had this for over a year now, I think. So there we have it. That is the eight books I want to read most before the end of the year let me know let me try and hold it up oh okay yeah let me know if you've read any of these what you thought of them which ones you think i will like the most if you know my reading taste thank you very much for watching i will see you very very soon i hope you're joining us this weekend for the thousand doors readathon it starts midnight uk time on sunday the 1st of november i'm so excited you're gonna have so much fun it's so cool what we put together and yeah hopefully i will see you soon Bye.